Sophia Louisa Lee. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of So Zoom In. I'm very excited to be bringing you Christopher Pappas today. He is an artist. I know we might be thinking painting, but no, that's not the case. He's an artist of a different sort. He is a music maker. He writes and creates music directly from his soul. And that is so beautiful. He has a new album that just came out not too long ago called How I Feel. And I look forward to speaking with him about that. So thank you so much for joining us. It's so great to see you, Christopher. Thank nice you. Nice so to much. see you. So, all right. You've had a lot going on this year. Yeah. Album release and all that. And uh, right? recording, and even recording some more stuff now as we speak. Um, you know, always writing. Well, you, okay, you are an artist. You, know, <laughs> you just you you do everything from your soul, and oh. I admire that so much about you because more people need to do that. And uh. so, so your album that just came out last September, we we're definitely going to talk about that. Sure. But if, if I remember correctly, you just went to Japan, wasn't it? That's right. I I went to Tokyo. Um, yeah, it, it it was it was wild. It was my first time there. And um, it was amazing. It, great food, uh, great people, um, really nice and a clean city too. And um, so different than what we have here in the West, which was fun to experience too. Because I've been to Europe a bunch of times. And I mean, obviously, I'm not saying anything new by saying that Europe is absolutely gorgeous um mm -hmm. but uh it was my first time in in the east you know which is a completely different culture um and uh it was just so fabulous did you get a chance to hear any any of the music there or did you get uh, unfortunately no we were it was more uh if i had to sum up the trip in one word it would be food <laughs> we just you know uh food and walking really we we tried to do so much and only got to see about i'd say less than one percent of the city even though we were going night and day trying to see as much as we could um and uh the uh it's just such a large city and there's so many different neighborhoods with their own personality. And so we opted to try and get a taste, just a small taste of as much as we could, which is a little bit different than how I usually travel. Usually, uh, this wasn't a tour, but I, I've traveled a lot on tour. And I really try and get to like, I wanna go to the bar that the locals go to. You know, I try and go deeper with a place rather than get a broad, um, overview. Uh, but for this trip, I just tried to hit all just like a very uh, skin deep uh, cross section of a lot of different neighborhoods. And um, I can't wait to go back. All right now I heard the food at 7 Eleven is really good. Is that true? It is 100% true. And it is so funny because literally, before I went, I had a few friends who had gone before and friends from absolutely different friend groups that don't even know each other, like just different friends I've had. They said, you have to get the uh, egg salad sandwich from 7-Eleven. It's like a thing. And I did. And it's a thing. It 100% is. That is sort of one of the greatest things that I've felt I saw of, of, I, I, I'm, and I was only in Tokyo. We did go to Kyoto for a day, uh, but primarily my experience was with Tokyo. And what I felt like I noticed is that everyone there sort of had the philosophy that if you're going to do it, do it to the highest of your ability, do it to the highest of the quality, like put effort into it, be purposeful with what you're doing and do it well and that shown through it, that quality came through in everything um and it was really appreciated by this 
by this dude right here. I really, it just, you could tell that everything was so, uh, people took care in what they did and, um, and it, it was great. It was great. It really ele elevated everything to the next level. So would you say you were inspired by the culture for your music? Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've heard, uh, Japanese music before, uh, um, and I've always really loved a lot of, uh, that music and the way I actually feel like that's sort of what I loved about Tokyo and why I felt somewhat at home there is that I do find that that's my philosophy too, that I, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it a hundred percent. And I find that I'm the most frustrated when I'm put into a position where I'm not allowed to do something to its full potential, whether it be uh, restricted by uh, time or uh, somebody's not willing to put the resources into just making the project 100% the best it can be. And so I find that that was my, is my philosophy and it was just great to see a city run on that philosophy. And you can, it's just, you can tell the difference. It's worth it at the end of it, at the end so of the day. You'd go back? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because like I said, I mean, I was there for 10 days. I feel like that's not even, I mean, I could spend years there and still I feel find new stuff to and and learn more things about the culture and and experience new things there. It's just so vibrant and lively. And like I said, the people were super welcoming and I never felt um, unsafe and I never felt like that I wasn't welcome there, which is just a really beautiful thing. And, a, and it was such a awesome experience to uh, experience that. I'm so glad you did, especially after the release of your album, which yeah. you know, it was a good vacation after. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. How much time did you put into making it? So this last record really it, it was a little too much time if you ask me <laughs> um yeah. it was you know some crazy stuff with my family my mom had a heart attack and you know she was actually legally dead for like five minutes and had to be like revived on my uh on my childhood home floor by the emts uh in new hampshire and so i the the period of me recording this last record was really over the course of maybe a year, which is not typically how I love to do things. I really work best when I'm able to get ideas out quickly and really process it and, and move on from it. But circumstances as they were, I was flying to and from LA back to my home in New Hampshire while my mom was recovering. She is fully recovered now, which is I, I just hats off to the EMT that literally saved her life by doing CPR all the way in the ambulance, all the way to the hospital. We were also just coming back from the pandemic, um, which also sort of impeded progress sometime, uh, sometimes say it was probably a little over a year that it took me to finally, from like the first note I played to when it was like released was like a year or so and that's not even counting the writing process so you know when you start to tally in all those hours it it probably is a, a little bit longer and it that in and of itself really informed the fact that i feel like i'm sort of done with records for a little bit and just want to put out songs just like write record out write record out um so with this one did you you waited till you had all the songs and put them together and release them all at the same time then yeah, so I have about, or I had about mm. 20 songs and we released 10. So, you know, typically when I'm recording an, an album, there is a period of time where it's like throw it all against the wall and see what sticks. Right. And that process sometimes can also be described as like, what song survives my, like, antagonistic nature towards like hating a song after a few months, you know, like what, what song will survive the, the process of me getting sick of something 
it's good to be meticulous. And like I said before, I love to do everything to 100%. But there's also a part of me that has a pretty good ability to talk myself out of a good idea if you give me enough time. And so I think that in the studio, I really try and um, curtail that tendency as much as possible. Uh, so I had about 20 songs that are were in various states of recording and 10 made the final cut. Okay. And that, and that became the record. Well, it, I've, I've listened to the album or it's hard to say album because I don't have a record player. You know, it's like right, yeah. online. Um, they all sound very cohesive. Like they all belong together. Um, was that definitely intentional or? Yeah, for sure. And, and that sort of went, that went into the process as well, because ultimately what, a story emerged as I was making the record and I feel like the songs that did survive the process survived because you know I thought they were great songs and I wanted to share them but they also survived because they fit a, a, they fit the mosaic they they were you know of the picture I was trying to um make and the narrative that I was trying to build with the record. Um, and so there is a through line narratively to the album that uh, feels cohesive. And so all the songs aided that. And, and, and at the end of the process, we sort of got a complete picture, which was part of the process of like, some songs just like didn't make the cut because they didn't fit thematically. Like I might redo them and release them later. So that was part of the process of like figuring out what songs fit what I was trying to say with the record. So how did you come up with the title? Because I have to admit, I really like the title. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, the, it was a, a summation of like what I thought the themes of the record were. Um, I found myself self during the pandemic and during uh, what, what was happening with my mom and um, unfortunately in the in the record process as well. Uh, one of my friends took his life and um, I found myself asking that question a lot. Like, how do I feel? I, I, I was like trying to check in with myself because it was the first time in my life that I didn't know if I was going to be able to handle what was happening. Um, and that was a scary prospect for me. And so, the how do I feel became more of I wasn't so much concerned with the answer to the question. I was more concerned with it being a mantra of of just taking stock of of what was going on around me. It was a way to sort of keep grounded during all the turmoil that was happening in my life. You know, I really love that because people always ask, how are you? And we're so, you know, automatically we just say, fine. We don't really think about what we're being asked. So when you say, how do you feel? It seems like it takes it to a whole new level where it's not an automatic response, but you're like, how do I feel? You know, what's, you know, and, and about, right. what? so I think that's so profound that you tied, you know, called it that. And then all the songs that you have, I feel like every single one of those songs on that album are very profound, even though, even though they're, I feel like I'm like be bopping, you're like moving to it. And then you really, I'm really listening to what you're seeing. And it's, it really goes deep. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I really, um, I really appreciate yeah, that. And it just, it, it also sort of it, during the time, like, you know, like I, I've never lost a parent. I've, I've never had a friend um take his own life before and so i was also going through new feelings and at my age like there's something kind of beautiful about the fact that you can no matter how long you live life can still surprise you in a way of 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 like wow I, what is this new feeling i thought i felt all the feelings but now i'm feeling like this new type of grief or this new type of fear or this new type of like melancholy and that also was sort of part of the title of like like how do i feel like how what is this feeling right now like this is new like can i handle this and and you start to ask yourself those questions and that 
is basically the the major through line of the record of of dealing with new emotions and and asking yourself if you're going to be able to handle it right yeah you're checking in which is great (laughs) many people don't they don't check in with themselves and ask themselves that so when you go around performing these different locations do you sing all the songs on the album or um not all of them but i think i've pretty much performed all of them live i'm trying to think if i yeah no, I, not all of them, you know, every show, but um, I try and mix some old songs as well. But it's it's funny at, at my level, you know, some people know my band and in certain circles, I'm uh, I'm kind of popular, I guess. But like for the majority, like I kind of feel like when I'm playing out live, a lot of people are seeing me for the first time. So it's all new to them, you know, so I don't so much have to worry about like certain songs being in the set list and the crowd being angry if I don't play them you know there's a certain freedom in that um but it's just also for my own I I like to mix it up so but a bulk of them are are in the set are you going to be touring touring with this album I know you've performed quite a few places already yeah so it I've I've been playing in Los Angeles and in fact I have another show at the Fable on November 19th but as far as major touring it is um I want to I've really started to pivot into live streaming um, for a few reasons. One, it was something that I got interested in during the pandemic where we literally couldn't go anywhere. And I was just starving to like play live because I, I love that energy of playing live. I love the challenge of like, you only get one chance to play. Um, in fact, I often find recording where you can do takes over and over again, kind of paralyzing. I love being off the cuff and I love that, that, that tight rope walk of playing live. I love the crowd energy. I, I, I just love the whole thing, but just in a cruel twist of fate, I guess I find it's the hardest part of the, the many aspects of building a music career that it, it's a piece that I find that it's the hardest one to place and it's it's not due to i i I would love to go out and uh and tour right now it's just that you know it's hard to find a band to open for and it's hard to make it make sense when you know you're not drawing that many people around the country um at my level and so play live streaming was to me a great way to continue to explore the songs live and allow everybody all over the world to tune in and 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 see and it, you still have that interaction with the live stream via chat um it's never going to replace the 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 sweat of a live show but it was it's something that i've really started to um uh to invest a little more time and effort into doing that. And so in 2024, I think I'm, I'm building some stuff behind the scenes and, and 2024, I'm going to really have live streaming be a significant part of what I do. So where do you live stream? On what? I live stream from my studio right here. On and, oh, where do I, um, YouTube and Twitch. Okay. Uh, can you combine Twitch with YouTube? Yeah, so I have a, a, there's software that allows you to stream to both simultaneously. Nice. Um, I started on Twitch and I find that the medium is still heavily gamer oriented. Uh, So I don't just in, in the way that the, the tools that Twitch gives you to build a live stream aren't totally suited for live music yet, I feel. So I've started to to move to YouTube, but I've amassed a, like a, a humble, small Twitch following. So I don't want to go cold turkey. So I'm going to do both for a while and and just sort of build. I, I'm definitely in the the nascent uh, like beginnings of exploring streaming. Um, so I, I still have a lot to learn about it, and and I'm just gonna learn as I go. And I'm sure, you know, if you talk to me in five months, I'll have like a different plan formulated (laughs) or whatnot. But 
So uh, what's your channel on YouTube? Is it L Bell Music or? Yes, on YouTube, it's it's L Bell Music. Would you yeah. ever, um, <laughs> um, would you ever actually like create music while you're live streaming? Like whether you're- I, I have done that too. Yeah, that actually, you know, that is part of my plan is that um, it'll be like live songwriting as well, where um, I can, you know, interact with viewers and they can ask me questions. I can give them tips and and stuff like that. I'm definitely uh, starting off slow and 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 wanting to build a piece at a time. But those are the main components: a, a live component, a songwriting component where I'm working on my stuff on my computer, and a component where I'm working with other people. Whether or not that's all the same show, as it were, I'm not sure. Uh, it might be just me streaming at different times to my channel and they're 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 different shows uh as it were but it's all in the mix that's exciting though but you just go for it you, you're just like throwing throwing yourself out there and doing it which i i admire so much oh thank you like you want to hold you back and you're just gonna you have a passion for it you can do it yeah, um so i i'm very much uh somebody that well like i said like if i have an idea i want to see it through and i want to do it the best i can and if i can't do it the best i can then i'm probably not going to do it and find that an idea is only as good as how you can execute it oh you are awesome christopher and i admire you so much and i'm so grateful that i've i've had a chance to get to know you and um you're just awesome you're just <laughs> thank <insane>. you likewise <laughs> likewise all right. Well, you have, I will see you on the 19th. Wonderful. It's one awesome. way or another. And um, we'll definitely be there. And I will put this out and get people and hopefully get lots of people to go. So it, you have a long line of people waiting to get in. And you have to do it. <laughs> that would be amazing. So there you go. <laughs> be amazing. Yeah.